Welcome again to Rusty's Rustic Pantry. We've come back now to um, our little experiment to make uh, corned beef and pastrami. And I say it's a little bit of an experiment on a couple of reasons. First off, corned beef and pastrami are usually made using brisket. And um, I didn't have brisket. I came across this piece of top side uh, that was on offer. I think I paid about £10 for this piece of meat. So we've decided to try and brine it. And I've also for the first time used a commercially produced brine, um, a mixture of salt and nitrates designed for wet brining rather than dry curing. And usually when I've brined pieces of muscle this big, um, I've used an injector like a syringe like this um, to get the brine into the meat as well so it brines outside in and also inside out but the producers of the brine I've purchased said it isn't suitable for that just um, put it in a uh, suitable container with um, the brine water uh, all mixed up ready to cover it now just to recap this is first of all we made a stock we brought up a gallon of water with um, some aromatic herbs and spices, you can see just some peppers left on the end of the meat there. Let that cool, we then added the salt, sugars and nitrates and the preservatives to the stock and this has been in the fridge, in the brine now for two weeks. Usually I would only leave it for about a week or so, maybe a little bit more, but uh, without injecting it um, I wanted to make sure this has got the cure right the way into the meat so the meat the cure has actually done the uh, the work it needs to do and had ample time to do it so a little bit nervous here we're going to be having a look so first of all I'm going to be turning one half of this into corned beef the other half I'm going to turn into pastrami so first of all we want to check to make sure that um, everything's nicely um, cooked through so first off we've got to remove this elastic stocking that was over the meat um, when we purchased it and I kept this on just to keep it in shape while it was in the brine so we'll take that off there we go we can discard that ok you can see there's a little bit of a fat cap on top there but that's fine it's not very thick at all and what I'm going to do is just slice this across the grain in the middle that's sharp actually Nice clean cut right the way through. We should have a lovely red colour inside, nice dark red, and there you go. All I can smell on there is all the herbs. Now, you will have a slight greyish colour on the outside, you see, it's quite, quite grey on the outside here with the extremities on the surface but if you look at the middle it's actually gone a very dark red darker than you would expect normally from raw meat and that's telling me that that cure has gone straight the way through the texture and the smell bear in mind this has been this is two weeks so that is cured nicely uh, decide which bit is going to do which I think we'll have this as our corned beef the thick end and I'll use that as a pastrami or should we do it the other way around I think we'll do it the other way around we'll have this as the corned beef because it goes thinner bear in mind it's going to be boiled I don't want this to get dry so that's going to be turned into our corned beef and this will eventually be turned into pastrami okay right before we do anything else with these um, I need to retie them this is going to be our corned beef now this is going to be cooked or boiled <coughs> simmered for a few hours and I don't want it to lose its shape so we're going to be retying it and tying is quite simple I'm not very quick at it and you watch your butchers do this in your local butchery shops and they make it look so easy but first we'll take a length of normal butcher string into the middle take one end you tie a knot around that end first of all, like so. So you've got a bit of a slip knot there. 
then you can just simply pull it tight over the meat and then lock it off again with another knot like so trim it discard the string you don't need so that one's in the middle I think we're only going to need about three or four ties around like this one further along at the thicker end again tie it off pull it tight and lock it and one more at the end Just to make sure, what I'm going to do is put a line on the length of the meat, <coughs> just to make sure that it stays in place. Again, tie it. and tight and off there we go and there we go nice and tidy all tied up ready to go in the pot and I'll do the same for the other half of the joint um, which is going to be turned into pastrami so here we are with our two tied joints of top side now this one that's going to be turned into corned beef I've got a pan of water here that's coming up to the boil once it's come to the boil turn it down to a simmer I'll drop the beef into the water or oh, it's just water nothing added to it bring it back up to a boil as soon as it hits the boil or just before you think it's going to hit the boil turn it down to a simmer you don't want this to boil because it go tough so give it a very sl uh, simmer for about 30 minutes to an hour take it off the heat empty the pot put fresh water in it and that will remove some of the saltiness from the beef from the cure and then again bring it to a simmer and you're going to simmer this for probably about two to three hours or until it's sort of like soft enough to put a, a fork through so it's going to take a little bit of doing um, but we'll come back to that um, in a few hours the piece here that I'm going to turn into pastrami now obviously this is a stray from the traditional recipes of pastramis and corned beef somewhat already but I'm actually going to smoke this cold smoke this first of all it will then have um, a peppery spicy type of rub applied all over and be left in the fridge overnight before that in turn is cooked and again we'll come back to that but I'm going to give this at least 10 hours on smoke maybe to 20 hours we'll see how it goes so we'll come back to these in a bit and we'll catch up with how they're getting on right this is our uh, beef that we uh, boiled up to make corned beef with unfortunately now um, I was hoping to be able to slice this warm but all the best laid plans of mice and men um, I had to leave it in the fridge overnight after it was cooked so we're going to slice this cold and get rid of these um, pieces of string and as I say it was boiled for about half an hour or simmered for about half an hour um, first of all changed the water and then gave it a proper simmer for about three hours so just going to take some thin slices off this and have a look and see what we've got <coughs> Okay. 
and there we go you can see that the um, cure has gone right the way through you've got that lovely pink color all the way through the beef there's lovely little slices there dead tender mmm really can taste the herbs and spices that we actually made the stock with and that's gone really well into the beef that was lovely right that needs to be wrapped up and sealed put in the fridge we can have some of that later on and let's put it on a plate I just want to show you the other piece of beef oh, that's all crumbling apart lovely beautiful now while I'm here this is the other piece of beef that we're going to turn the pastrami that's been in the smoke for 10 hours and um, we're not going to give it too heavy a smoke because I'm going to make up the rub in a few minutes and um, coat that and leave it overnight again before it's cooked so that's had a light smoking see the colour change on it now with the smoke I say so we'll come back to that um, to make up the rub and we'll cook that tomorrow and see what we get to result wise from that right so we're going to be looking at making a dry rub for the pastrami I'll turn this pan up um, we saw how well the corned beef turned out and again it's a side idea although there's probably not a shot at the moment but I do have the piece of beef that we're going to turn into pastrami now that has been cured it's been in the smoker for 10 hours it's rested overnight and now I'm going to make up a dry rub that will go over the the, uh, the beef and uh, that again will rest overnight before we cook it but first of all we need to make up this rub I've got a pan here, a dry pan and I'm going to be to first of all toasting some spices in here I have a heaped teaspoon each of uh, mustard seed, coriander seed whole black pepper and fennel seed and they're going to go straight into the hot pan like so I'm going to toast those, dry toast them to really really enhance the flavour turn that up of, uh, of these spices put that on heat now what will happen is um, once these are toasted through we don't want them to burn but once they're toasted through they're going to go into um, a spice grinder and we're going to be adding some other ingredients to make up the rest of the rub I don't know whether you can hear but they're just starting to crack and first of all I'm getting the aromas of the fennel seed nice aniseedy sort of smell peppercorn stuck in the floor it's on a small burner but as you see we haven't got a great deal of, um, of spices in there so no need for a large burner or a huge amount of heat there and that here you can just see the colour starting to change slightly I think that'll probably do us here we've got the spice grinder I'm just going to tip these into there as much as we can without spilling them everywhere this pastrami there's a lot of um, waiting about but hopefully the final results we get will be well worth the effort that we put in they are nice and hot ok put the lid on I want to turn these into a nice fine powder Wow. 
and he's got the lid, give it a bat. And there you can see lovely fine powder of our lovely toasted spices. There's still some stuck in the bottom there. Get it straight round. Wow, there's a really, really lovely aroma from like this. Smells gorgeous. There we go. Wonderful. Let's get that out of the way. We don't need that anymore. And to this, I'm going to add three heaped teaspoons of smoked paprika. And that goes. One heaped teaspoon of garlic powder. And one table, sorry, these are tablespoons rather than teaspoons. Tablespoon of um, unrefined molasses sugar. Now, sugar is a difficult bit because it's quite moist, and you really do need to get in and break this up to mix with the spice. And the easiest way to do that is hands in and just rub it all together to make it into a nice even powder. Incidentally you can use this, this isn't just necessary, you can use this for, for a pastrami, you can use it as a, a basic barbecue rub, add other things to it. It's really down to your own personal preference. You can add uh, chilli powder but I think with the black pepper and the mustard seeds I think they're going to give enough kick in this without going too mad. Just give this a quick mix up. See, it's all turning into a nice powder that's fusing with that moistish sugar. There we go. Lovely. And actually, there's more than enough here to uh, to coat that um, piece of beef. Ample. Okay. So we bring in our beef, a nice tray, and it's literally just a case of pouring over, rubbing it all into it. Getting the rub over every surface of the meat. Like so pour it all onto the tray, and this makes life easier then, you can just turn the meat over, roll it around. in the rub, get the rub to stick in, give it a good massage into the meat, like so. Now as you notice there was no salt added to this rub, obviously being cured already this beef will already have a certain amount of salt in it, so the last thing you want to do is add more to it and dry it out even more. But that is looking lovely. Make sure you get it into all the nooks and crannies. What I'm going to do now is put this in the fridge overnight. I'll leave the excess rub on the tray because during the course of the day I'll pop back and probably put some more rub over it as it dries a little bit. And that should do. Okay, so we'll come back to that when we're ready to cook it. Okay, there we go, that's the uh, piece of beef that we've had in the fridge overnight, 24 hours with all the rub on. That's now going to go into the oven for a slow cook, low temperature, and it's going to be loosely covered, very loosely covered with a piece of uh, tin foil, um, certainly for the first half of the cook anyway. Probably going to be in there for about two or three hours because I'm going to cook it very slow and low. So we'll come back to this when it comes out of the oven. Uh, see what sort of results we get. So we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Right, so this is the final part of our um, video series in where we're looking at making corned beef and pastrami. Before we go any further, today is Father's Day and I just happened to be wearing a present that my wife and my daughter got me today. My own custom printed Rusty's Rustic Pantry apron. Um, how cool is that? 
very happy indeed. So um, without what to do, we're going to have a now look at the pastrami that uh, I cooked yesterday. Unfortunately, um, best day plans of most and men and that sort of thing. I was hoping again to carve this hot, but with other family commitments and things going on, it didn't happen. So we carved this this morning after it's been in the fridge and it's cooled down. Right, so here you can see the pastrami. It's got this rub still on it. Um, the rub is still quite soft and sticky to the touch because I did put an awful lot of the rub on top of this. And the first thing we need to do is remove the um, bush of strings. I had to tie this up just while it was cooking. There's still juice coming out of the bottom of this as you can see. So we'll get rid of that. There should be three more or four more going across the top. That'll do. Cut through the first couple. Let's get rid of that. That's one. Another one here. I think I'm going to use this opportunity as well to get some kitchen towel and just wipe off some of the excess of that rub. It was cooked in the rub. Um, I think I will put on a little bit too much there. So I'll just take some of that off. Like so. Wow. There's still a lot of juice there as you can see. Now I'm going to put this onto our bacon slicer. I'm just give my hands a quick rinse. Quite dry off. That's a chopping board for white. That's better. Then you did wash after. Okay. Right, let's see about cutting this and slicing it. I'm going to take a decent slice off for the first run. Quite dry. As you would expect, this has been roasted, of course, for two hours covered. Half hour without the steam pour off. It's in a slice of there. Just like it's going to be lovely pink in colour. This would have been lovely to have been uh, served warm. So unfortunately can't do that today, maybe next time we'll try and organise that. And there we go. That's nice good things. You can see straight away there's a lovely, lovely crust all the way around the meat there. And hold up to you. Still lovely and pink in colour. See how it tastes with that rub. kick to it. Wow. You've got the saltiness of the cure, the taste of the smoke from the smoking, and all of a sudden you get that fire. Mmm. From the mustard seed and the rub. That's lovely. That really is good. It's just a pity I didn't have a chance to do this hot. Nice and hot on a piece of rye bread. Mmm. That would have been awesome. But there you go. Pastrami, that keep in the fridge for a while. Um, wrap it up in cling film or tin foil, and it's just ready there to be sliced as and when we need it. That's awesome! Wow, that really does actually have quite a bit of kick to that. That's quite good, very, very good indeed. Mm. So, at last, 
And that concludes our corned beef and pastrami video. Hope you enjoyed watching it. Have a good doing it yourself. Let us know how you get on. Feedback on the videos is much appreciated. Please, if you watch the videos and you want to comment, fantastic. I take all the comments on board. I'll try and reply to as many as I possibly can. Um, and once again, thanks for watching Rusty's Rustica Pantry. Thank you very much indeed.